Senator, thank you so much for coming back to Nevada. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we all look at is a record of somebody that's running. One of the things that impresses me about your record is your name is on at least 85 bills, bipartisan bills that have passed Congress. Can you tell us the top three bills that you're most proud of? Yeah, very good. Well, I am very proud um, of a, first I'll start with a drug shortage bill, because that was a bill uh, that no one seemed to notice this was happening, and kids actually didn't even have access to cancer drugs, right? They were really running out of drugs, and they were, we in my state, and this happened all over the country, uh, people were literally going up to Canada uh, to try to get the drugs. And so I joined forces with a Republican senator and one other Democrat, um, and we introduced this bill, and it was just the two of us and then the three of us, and no one seemed to really care about it at all, but like this. Well, finally, uh, other senators started hearing about it, like literally six months to a year later, um, and we got that bill passed. And that was a big deal, and it's relevant right now because um, the way we did it is that if you start having not enough drugs, you can actually get the drugs from other countries. Um, and just think about how you can do that if you start tying it to price with pharmaceuticals, right? If you can tie that that way. So that was one thing. Um, the second thing was getting that funding um, for the bridge. And for me, again, that's a symbol of what we should be doing, uh, which is that uh, pass this infrastructure plan. I'm the first candidate to come out of the presidential race uh, with an infrastructure plan. Uh, it is fully paid for. The president has suggested doing this. And it's like a mirage. He ran on it, he said it after he got in, and we just haven't seen that pass. And so I think that's very important, a trillion dollar infrastructure plan. Paid for, by the way, by taking that corporate tax rate that went down to 21%, way lower than it should have. Even if you bring it up to 25%, that's something like $400 billion. The way they did the international taxes, does anyone have money in the Bahamas? Okay, well then this won't affect you, okay. So, but it used to be that you would just look at what the rate was in each country. They did this crazy thing about the average rate. And it literally, if you go back to the way it was before, um, it still is preferable. Even if you do that, that saves $150 billion, right? A financing authority where you put a bunch of federal money and we're suggesting 25 some billion and then it's matched by state and by private financing. Bonds, and these are two bipartisan proposals that are already in the Senate. So that would be the second thing. Third thing, and I sometimes think big things are really important um, that I've gotten done, but sometimes it's the small things that make the biggest difference. And that was a um, bill that was um, really called, it was actually named after um, James Baker, the former Secretary of State, his granddaughter, Virginia Grant Baker, because she had died in a swimming pool um, with this uh, drain uh, that malfunctioned. And so that bill had been kicking around Congress and was going nowhere until a little girl named Abby Taylor in Minnesota uh, was in a swimming pool, a public access swimming pool, and she um, got on a malfunctioning drain and was just lost her intestine. It was a horrible thing. She ended up having 17 surgeries. I went to her hospital bed and this little girl who was something like eight years old with this big smile, she said, I just don't want this happening to anyone else. So her parents, did not give up. They did not give up. And her dad, Scott Taylor, would call me every single week. I'd only been in the Senate for like a year and a half, and I felt like going, you know, really? Um, and so she would, he would call me, and finally we got this done. By the way, with Harry Reid's help, okay? Um, and I got that thing done, and I got to call, um, I got to call Scott from the cloakroom, and I remember I put Harry on the line. I'm remembering this now. Um, and I got to, uh, So about two years ago, the head of the Consumer Product Safety Commission came before the Commerce Committee on which I serve and testified that they had not seen another death from a malfunctioning pool. So, people may say that's little. And I'll do one more minor but big deal suck up uh, for my state and your state, and that is that I passed and was the lead on Brand USA, uh, which is a huge deal in tourism. And I chair that tourism caucus, and that's the money that comes in um, that we, we set up with foreign visa fees, and it allows us to advertise our country in other countries, and it's made a big, big difference. And I have now 
I'll let that build twice. Um, and it's one of the top priorities for, um, for tourism and for workers that work in tourism. So, thank you. <laughs> Because we learned that in 2018, 
We learned that when we ran these great candidates like Jackie Rosen. And we ran United, important when we have all these people running. We ran United and we also ran um, with a sense of purpose. And we ran with an economic agenda that no matter what he said or what he did, we would point to most notably health care. And we ran on the fact that they, and they've now shown their stuff just two weeks ago, we're trying to take our health care away uh, by getting rid of the prohibition on pre-existing conditions. And I remember being in a small town parade and this mom with a stroller, she points to her uh, little toddler and says, this is my son. He has Down syndrome. And this is what a pre-existing condition looks like. And I will do anything to fight for him. That was what we did in 2018. We understood that, you know what, all this crap with people fighting on TV and the left, right, no, 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 that's important. But what's really important is that we were fighting for her family and we were fighting for her son. And we know we have a lot of challenges right now with the president who doesn't seem to see the law, which doesn't, who doesn't seem to obey the law, with the president who literally um, or tweets whatever he wants every single morning, right? but that doesn't respect the amendment that allows him to do it. So we have those constitutional, I'm looking at your ACLU shirt, so I'm you know, we have these, these constitutional challenges, but I've always believed that we are Democrats and we can do two things at once, right? Uh, we can do two things at once. Uh, so keeping on this optimistic economic agenda is going to be key. All right, you in the red. Same, right? And those parents afterward were in my office the morning 
when I told them, you know what? I just talked to Senator Manchin, he and Senator Toomey, two A-rated NRA um, uh, senators, were not able, they, we didn't have the votes to get this thing done, even though they had gotten the universal background check, closing the gun show the poll. And so I had to tell them, and this one mom was sitting there, and she said, you know what? I uh, lost my son. And she described that morning, and he was autistic, and he couldn't really speak, but he loved his school aid, and he would point up at her picture every single day in the refrigerator, and the same thing happened the morning that she lost him. He goes to school, she, next thing you know, she's in the firehouse with all the parents. One by one, the kids come in, and pretty soon the parents that were left there knew they would never see their babies again. And as she's sitting there sobbing, she's thinking, of course, of her son, but she has this thing in her head about that school day, because she knew that that woman would never have left his side. And when they found them with the arms around that little boy, that woman, they were both shot to death. All right? So you think about, you think about the courage of those parents. They were there advocating for universal background checks, right? Even though in that case in Sandy Hook, it wouldn't have saved uh, their babies, but they knew it was the best way to reduce domestic homicides and suicides. But we didn't have the courage in the Senate to pass that. That that's was horrendous. Cool. Yes, okay, that's fine. Um, so that is, so that is the other thing I can say about this. And the final thing which should give you hope, we couldn't do it in law enforcement, those Sandy Hook parents couldn't get it done, but guess what happened in this last election after Parkland? Those students, they didn't just march, they voted. And the way I look at it, and that's why that bill passed in the House, the way I look at it is after all these years and this arc of trying to get something done on this issue, if we're busted by a bunch of 17 year olds, that's a great thing. Okay. advise the president 
Um, and that's what I put in that uh, editorial that you guys should look at. But it's just a simple idea that, yeah, you want to get advice from the Justice Department, but you also want to get advice from a group. Uh, it can be um, bipartisan, but you want to get a group of advisors giving you advice on what these sentences should be and if you should be looking at clemency. All right? Trying to even up, you know, we, we don't have a glass ceiling for men asking questions, so I to make sure that's clear because we've had a lot of women ask questions. That's a really good thing. Welcome to the bottom. Thank you. As I always say in the races, in this race for president, may the best woman win. So. <laughs> Start with that for parents. 
I would make it easier to have actual good preschool because otherwise you're giving a kid, it's, they don't have an even playing field when they start. It's literally when you first start. You can see the numbers of kids that are poor um, because they don't have that access. They have less words uh, when they go to school and it's very hard to catch up after that. So I would start with that. I would then go through uh, with K through 12 and making sure, as you heard how much devoted I am to public schools, making sure that we have an increase in teachers' pay, so we honor what they do, that we have those in the um, We talked about college education and making sure that we have access there. Uh, there's a huge racial disparities, um, and for, I think, when you look at the access that people have uh, later in their life, housing, uh, we need to revamp our country's housing. So I don't see it as just one answer, right? I, I just don't think, I think you have to look at everything surrounding this because civil rights laws being enforced is important, but as I was just out in New York um, and did the, a, a speech there with the African American community, um, it was Martin Luther King who once said, you know, what good is it to integrate a lunch counter, I'm paraphrasing, if you can't afford a hamburger, right? So a lot of this is looking at that arc of justice and making sure we look at everything surrounding people. And then the other thing I would add um, is savings. It's not the sexiest thing to bring up, but it is the elephant in the room. And uh, Chris Coons and I, the Center from Delaware, just introduced a bill that's supported by the SEIU, actually, a major uh, union here in Nevada. And it's also supported, a bunch of groups are supporting this. And it's a really interesting idea because so many workers are in a gig economy, right? So many young people don't just have one job uh, with one pension and they move around to different jobs. Um, it's just not how it used to be. So what this thing says is for employers, if you don't have a 401k and you don't have any kind of pension, uh, then if you have 10 or more employees, you've got to start putting 50 cents an hour into your employee's savings. Now this sounds small to you, but it means for someone when they're 20 and then they retire, it's going to be five hundred thousand to six hundred thousand dollars, all right? And tax credits, right? Tax credits to make this work so that it's easier for those small employers to be able to afford it. 50% for the first 15 workers, 25% uh, for the next 15, uh, for the next 15 workers. Uh, it is portable, so you can bring it with you. We're calling them up accounts. It is pragmatic. The first $2,500 saved, you can use for emergency expenses. Um, so you could actually withdraw it that year. You know why? Four out of ten um, Americans cannot even afford a four hundred dollar emergency room bill. They don't have enough liquid savings to do that. So that first twenty five hundred dollars you could take out if you need it for something like that. Um, and then the final thing is we automatically enroll people in this when they start. They can take themselves out. They're going to be told, but a lot of people when they're young and they start, they're not thinking what it's going to be like when I'm eighty years old. Um, and a senior, but you're, but you're not one, so. Um, uh, you know, so it's just looking at um, this, every, the life, people's lives from beginning to end, um, and looking at what we're doing with our tax rates, which are so unfair, where um, increasingly, uh, the people at the top 1% has gotten a bigger and bigger piece of the pie. But my point is, that's how you pay for, some, for a lot of this, but it's not just tax rates, it's a way of thinking. And our economy isn't gonna work, uh, if you don't have people's back and you don't have people that can afford to buy things in our economy. And the last thing I'll end with is, I, I know you want me to end with some aspirational flourish, but I'm going to end with the antitrust law. Okay, so, and that is because that is really important. I've been working on this forever. I've been heading up the subcommittee or Ray Canfer. And what this is, is there's too much consolidation, right? So what does that mean when there's too much consolidation? Well, it means that the workers um, have less power. Right, less power in their wages, it means consumers are unable to get good rates because you're only down to two. My favorite example is online travel. Um, online travel, you think you get all those choices. It's only two companies that have nearly 90% of the market. They just have like eight different names for them, right? That's one example. Um, our seed market, again, two companies, almost 80% of the seeds uh, that plant the crops that make your food. Okay, there's another example. Pharma, when all those prices go up all the time, like the EpiPen, well that's because there weren't, wasn't any competition. 
So we need tech, you know what's happening there. So this is about changing our laws to match the times we're in. It's about making it easier for the Justice Department and the FTC to enforce the laws. I've got to be able to do that by dropping the bucket for these companies, but on the mega mergers, they would just pay a little more and that would help us fund them. And the second thing is the standards that we're using um, to modernize them. But there's just, as one woman said at a diner in Minnesota to me, there's too much big, okay? <laughs> All right, so that's what this is about. Okay, okay, one, just wrap it around, yes? Okay. He's getting really mad, so I have no idea what this question is. <laughs> okay, yeah. I know, I'm gonna end with them. Are you kidding? I'm not, you know, no, no, you go, you go, and then I'll end with them, and then we're gonna go through some. Okay, and then we'll do some photos. Yeah, so I guess that's... <laughs> <laughs> always happens really frustrated. So. No, it always happens with me. Anyway, so... As we have seen time and time again throughout even this campaign in, in 16 and 18, there's a certain level by certain pundits like your Solizas and your Chuck Todd's about how... It's getting the, the media interested. Well... That, um, yeah. that if, like, say you say the wrong word or something like that, uh -huh. if there's going to be a million articles about how horrible, and yet, say, Trump is not held to the higher standard, okay. they just yeah. cover speeches, they, oh, how, how will you deal with that if you're the nominee, or even okay. just running on the trail? Okay, well, first of all, I'm the daughter of a reporter. Hi, Amy. I'm Tiala, and 